All right, in this video, we're going to um, deal with the equivalent stiffness of a system. We have a uh, gantry crane here that is composed of a beam and a cable attached to that beam, which is in turn attached to a mass. So we are asked to draw the equivalent spring mass system for this gantry crane. What this means is that we are asked to draw an equivalent one degree of freedom system composed of one spring that has an equivalent stiffness, or rather a stiffness equivalent to uh, the stiffness contribution of the beam and the cable. In this case, we have two contributions for the stiffness and one of them is by the beam and the other one is by the cable. Okay, so we're going to deal first with the beam. So if you pick up a Mechanics of Materials book, you'll find that the deflection at midspan is equal to the force applied multiplied by the length cubed divided by 48 Young's modulus times the moment of inertia. Now, you know that the force is equal to stiffness times deflection or elongation. We'll write deflection here. And that really is just Hooke's law. F equals K. X. So the stiffness is equal to the force divided by the deflection. All right, so let's take our expression and isolate the force divided by the flexion. So that would be F over delta. And that would be equal to 48 Young's modulus, moment of inertia, divided by L cubed. OK. So that is the equivalent stiffness of the um, beam. And I just want to put a, a note here quickly. That is for midspan load. OK. Now, what about the stiffness of the cable? Well, this is pretty simple. You've probably seen this formula before. So we will say that the stress is equal to the force divided by the area. But that's also equal to Young's modulus times the deformation. So you see here we have uh, the same pattern. We have a force, and then we have some deformation. Uh, this is non-dimensional deformation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to isolate the force. And that should be equal to um, AE times the non-dimensional deformation. Now, we want to transform this into actual deformation. We would have to multiply by L. Um, but since we can't just multiply by L, we also have to divide by L. So we would say 
multiply it by L, divide it by L, and distribute those terms. So we're going to bring 1L here times epsilon L. So this is right here, the equivalent stiffness of the cable. You might have seen this equation before, as I said, but uh, so just so you know, that's where it comes from. Now, um, the reason why these two springs are in series is because um, if, if they're in parallel, then the deflection of one is equal to the deflection of the other. A, a parallel arrangement would be something like this. And so if you push on this surface over here, rather, I shouldn't put that. Yeah, if you push here, then both of them are going to have the same deflection. And that's called a um, parallel arrangement, a series arrangement. Uh, in this case, you know that the beam will not deflect the same amount as the cable will uh, stretch. So that's why it's a series arrangement. OK. So now let's calculate the equivalent stiffness of the new system. Since they're in series, we have to use this formula. So the inverse of the sum of the inverses. So that's beam plus 1 over k cable. And that's um, we'll substitute the values. So the beam is 48 times 200 times 10 to the 9 times 3.5 times 10 times 10 to the minus 4, all of that divided by 3.1 meters cubed. And that'll give you 112.8 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter. All right. Let's do the same thing for the cable. And then we said that it was equal to A, the area, which is pi times R squared times Young's modulus, which is the same material, divided by L, and L is equal to 9 for the cable. And so we get 698.1 newtons per meter, okay, so finally the equivalent stiffness is equal to 1 over One over 112.8 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter plus 1 over 698.1 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter. And so that'll give you 97.1 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter. Notice that this value is always smaller than all of the elements that you have in the denominator. So the first one was 112 and the other one 698, but the resultant is 97.1. That's a pattern that you're always going to see. So we are almost done. We're just gonna draw the new system or the equivalent system to answer the question. You have some mass the mass term doesn't change, so there's no notion of equivalent mass, but there is a notion of an equivalent spring. 
And in this case, we have 97.1 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter. The reason why we would want to study or go through the tr trouble of finding what a, an equivalent system is, is that whatever you're going to calculate about this uh, equivalent system also holds for the original system. So in this case, it's straightforward to calculate the natural frequency um, for the system. Um, but it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be as simple or rather straightforward uh, for the uh, the original system. So we're done. Uh, again, the um, PDF worksheet is going to be in the link below. And as always, I thank you for watching.